Hello lovely people and welcome to another episode of Show Your Tune and today we're going to have Michael with his Subaru Forester. Before we go into the tune and see any pictures, just a reminder that this is kind of new series that I'm doing where I'm taking your REW measurements, some of the photos that you send, a description, and I'm making a video about it. So if you want to uh, give me your details and share your secrets, you can send an email to rawcoreaudiotuning at gmail.com and I will do this with your car. It can be anonymous, it can be not a full tune, it can be just raw measurements, whatever you want. So let's have a look. So Michael writes uh, and he gives me all his equipment. So he has a Helix DSP Pro Mark II, which is uh, same DSP that I had, I just sold it. Uh, Helix A4, four channel amp, audio system for channel amp. So audio system, I'm not familiar at all with this brand, but he has it. Uh, Rockford Force Gate, that's for rear fill, just a small little amplifier. Uh, tweeters, again, audio system, uh, mid-bass audio system, and one of the subs he has, so he has two subwoofers, uh, different measurements for them. So one of them is the audio system 12 inch and the other one is a Hertz, uh, is it a 10 inch? I think it's 10, 10 or 12 inch. I think it's a shallow mount. And he has mid range Hertz, uh, milli legend, um, and rear fill. So for the rear fill, it doesn't really matter. We're not gonna look at it at all. And he sent me loads of basically all the data sheets, which is very, very useful. And I want to look at a few things. So first of all, that unfamiliar uh, amplifier, which is this one. And the most surprising part of it, so this is um, 175.4, and this is four times 175 watts into four ohms. It's a massive, big power amplifier and bridged into two ohms, two channels, two times. So it's like 2K amp, which is so surprising. And you're going to see in the pictures, it's massive. And another thing I want to have a look very quickly is the, because I'm not familiar with this brand at all. So the tweeter, which is this one. Uh, it's, where is it? FS850, so quite low, ni almost 91 dB efficiency. It's a cool tweeter. This is the mid bass. Um, from the specs, it's not really special. However, so FS is 60 and sensitivity is 93 dB. Well, it's 2.8 volts, but it's still like 90, 91 dB efficient. So it's a uh, very efficient and quite low FS mid base. And MMS, so moving mass is only eight grams. So it's very, very light. So it's kind of cool mid base driver. So, and the subwoofer, which is this one. So this subwoofer, 12 inch, it has an FS of 38 Hertz. So it's kind of, and RMS 1000 watts. So I, I don't want to say it's SPL oriented, but it has a higher FS, uh, 0.5 QTS. So it can be used in, in sealed ideally, but I think he has it imported. So I want to say this is, Mm, SQL maybe, but definitely not an SQ uh, subwoofer. So let's have a look at some pictures, send me some pictures. So this is Amprac, this is outside of the car and this is inside of the car. Uh, this thing, <laughs> the capacitor, I would highly advise it to bin it. I can see that it's connected directly to the mm, this four channel that supplies the subwoofer. I would imagine, but yeah, if you want a cap, go for super caps. 
I think, what's the brand? Maxwell. Maxwell Super Caps. So, like, if you have it, like, five or six in, um, I think they connected in series. Those Super Caps are going to be much better than this cap. Or just get a bank of lithium. But, yeah. So, a little bit of a spaghetti, but it's fine because all the wires are secured. Uh, the only thing that I don't see is any of the fuses. Like, I like to overfuse my stuff. Uh, it's, it's like amps have fuses, internal fuses and everything. And like for DSP as well, I can see the DSP goes directly in there and it doesn't have any fuse. So I would just advise instead of this uh, distribution block, just have a fused distribution block because I, I don't know, I love fuses. Uh, mid base and the doors lovely to see so i think it looks like bolt baltic birch ply plus aluminium rings very very nice sturdy good install and this is his dash so he has see he made like in the dash locations the mid-range and the tweeter so it's fiberglass, looks like fiberglass, kind of mini pillar build and sanded. And it looks, looks like this. So this is before the trimming and everything, but we have, so we will see this in the measurements as well. The mid range is firing up the glass. And as you can see, the distance to the glass is quite high. And because this will, um, give you the cancellation we're going to see that and tweeters are kind of on the inner side of the mid-range so he said that at the moment uh he cannot put them in the pillars but he's planning to put the mid uh, the tweeters in the pillars but they would be like here perfectly mounted so even if it's i would advise you like michael if you can just rip them out and just stick it with double-sided sticky tape or something to the pillar and it's going to be uh, i would imagine much better than having them um like because you're losing the width and you want for especially for the tweeters you want them to be as wide as possible but yeah looking good uh again what i would like to see is mid-range closer to the glass so it would be less distance, but I would imagine this glass, because it's kind of a, the Subaru Forester is kind of an SUV almost. So I would imagine it has like a steep angle on the glass and not very shallow. But yeah, okay, so these are the pictures. Let's have a look at the measurements. Yeah. So all these measurements, so we have, we have a house curve. We have some measurements and we have some raw measurements at the bottom because he sent me the first when he sent me. I didn't have any raw measurements, but uh, let's have a look at the house curve that he chose. So this is a full tune done by him, not only raw measurements, but with EQ and everything. And we're going to have a look. So we have crossovers at 3K, 300. Yeah, so like 300 for those Milli Legend mid-ranges are perfect they could play a bit lower but 300 is fine this tweet uh, 3k so from from the fs i would say this tweeter could play lower much lower maybe like 2.2k or even down to 2k I'm not sure about the distortion but that tweeter is very capable it can play low the mid base is crossed into the subwoofer at 60. so he did mention in the email that he likes to play uh, music quite loud and we can see this from the rise so we have like from 60 at 30 hertz we have 5 10 15 20 db plus on the sub bass so that's quite a lot and in this system as you can see uh, from the house curve that he chose i can see that the mid bass is going to be extremely stressed out because you can see this mid bass has to play all the way down to 40, almost flat, and only then fall down. So in this system, a, a front subwoofer would benefit highly or uh, bigger mid bass drivers, maybe 8 inches to play that low. Because obviously the subwoofer cannot play that high. But 60 in a loud system is a bit low. 
Okay, let's have a look at the raw responses. We have tweets. Uh, where is it? This one. So one and a half K crossover. Tweet left, tweet right. Very nice response. All the way up to 14 and 15 and a half K. But like, there's no massive peaks, no nothing. Like flat. You can just literally pull the level down and have them almost flat already. Very nice, very nice response for the tweeters. They can easily be crossed at three. Okay, let's have a look at the mid range left and mid range right. So, this is with um, protective crossovers at 100 hertz. And as we can see, so this mid range it has an FS of like 110, 120, something like that. And you can see it starts falling like at 150. So you you know that it doesn't like to play very low. So cross it at like 300, that would be ideal. And from the mid range, we can see it plays 17k. So even higher than the tweeters, I want to say. Let's have a look. Um, tweeter left tweet uh, right yeah so it, it these mid ranges play almost higher than the actual tweeters aimed at the glass and here we can see on the which one is it this is the right one so on the right one there's a massive massive dip at like 250 to 60 not sure about this dip so right one uh, that's going to be the passenger side. So this is very similar to the one that we had, uh, if you remember a few episodes ago, Pizza from Malaysia. Uh, he had Fatal Pros in his dash and we had exactly the same dip in there and we concluded that it was a reflection from the passenger side, not from the driver's side door. So Michael, if you're watching this, uh, try to measure the right mid-range with your um, door open and see if this dip changes. Just very interesting to see. And this, so let me remove the all the house curves just to see it a bit clearer. You can see this massive, massive, massive dip at 1.2K and this is because the distance between the mid-range and the glass is very high. If you would have like the mid range much closer to the windshield and the distance would be lower, that wouldn't be as high and as deep. It would be probably higher and not as deep, but this is massive, massive just because of the distance to the glass. And yeah, you cannot do much unless you're gonna aim them. So like I'm doing in my car, if you could, because you have loads of space here, you could literally like put almost like 45 degree angle, uh, like a pod, exactly like the tweet. Yeah. So you would need to aim this mid range exactly the same like the tweeter. And then it would help with this dip. But apart from that, we have very nice top end, very nice here. Everything is very fine. So mid range, mid range, uh, base right base left yeah so yeah they play down to 40 and after 40 fall down so in the doors and it's not a bad response from the doors but yeah again we see these things a dip like a 180 this is a massive hole and on this one yeah doors 150 we cannot do anything about it. So this, this, and then we have, and this is exactly what I mean. Like if I have these both mid bases and the house curve for the um, tweet, is this a mid, mid range? This one, mid base. Yeah, so you can see like with no crossovers applied, uh, the frequency response kind of follows the house curve down to like 40 only and if you need to apply the crossovers which you actually need to do it's not going to follow this car house curve so um, yeah it's not ideal but we're going to see how he tuned this and let's have a look at the subwoofer so we have subwoofer 
So this is the MPS. So this is the Hertz because he has two. So this is the Hertz one. And at the top, somewhere here, base left, this one. Yeah, so this one is his subwoofer crossed 20 and 60. So 20 is a subsonic filter because it's important enclosure. And 60, uh, it doesn't look like it's crossed. But yeah, so both of these, you can see, they play very similar. They have a massive peak at about like 40, 45 hertz. And then not that much of the low end. But we can see that his ported for some reason has a massive peak here. But on both of them, we see this cancellation, which is like at 80 hertz or something, which is again due to the length of the car. And depending on the position where the subwoofer position, because it's not shown in the picture. So if he has it like behind the rear seats, uh, this may be because of that. So let's have a look how he tuned everything. So he chose tweet. Uh, okay. Tweet across to 3K. Left and right. Let's double check against this. Yeah, very nice. So in this particular case, you can see the tweeters are across at 3K and the house curve is at 3K as well. So in this particular case, um, the acoustical crossovers kind of match the electrical. It doesn't happen often, but in this particular case, particular case, it does happen. So it looks very nice. It just needs a little bit of EQ. So let's have a look what EQ job he did. Right tweet XO, tweet right EQ. There we go. Very, very nice. Yeah, not perfectly following, but following. So I can see here, like down the slope, yeah, see down the slope. So this is follows all the way down to like one point something, but this is a bit more energy. So what I advise you to do is depending on the crossover that you chose, choose a slightly higher slope. So if you chose like 24 dB, try 36 dB just to bring this uh, area down. Alternatively, you can choose a higher crossover frequency and then just all of this is going to go down and then you will need to slightly boost this area with EQ. So that's left tweet. Uh, uh, do we have the same with the right tweet? Uh, right and tweet. Uh, was, I, was I looking at the left one? Yeah, but they're exactly the same and exactly the same problem. So you have this area is falling perfectly down to here and then you have excessive energy here or alternatively you could uh, grab one EQ. uh no but this is c it goes all the way down to here you could grab alternatively like one eq band at about like 901k with wide q like 0.5 q and just bring it down by like 5 db or something just get rid of this excessive energy down there because uh it's not needed there so that's the tweeters. Let's have a look at the mid range. Mids. Mid left. So he crossed them at 303k. Let's see. Yeah, so from this, basically top end, bottom end. Yeah, and again, this dip, you cannot do much with this dip. Where's the Q mid left? Mid right, mid left. So yeah, level, leveling. What I advise you to do again is to do the level matching only after you do the EQ. Mid left EQ one. There we go. Yeah, perfectly. So it does because here you can see if you chose this level or minus six dB. Uh, you could ch have chosen different crossovers, especially at the bottom end. If you cross it at 300, you could probably cross it at like 
400, 450, just to bring this, even with a shallower slope, you could do like maybe 612 dB, and then just get rid of this energy without the EQ, because you had to EQ down like 10 dB. So instead of EQing, you could do this with a crossover. And similar here, just a little bit uh, lower crossover. So if you chose 3K, maybe lower it down to 2.8, 2.7K, and just bring this down without using EQ. Yeah, and this dip, yeah, you cannot do anything about this dip. So it just stays there because if you're going to try to boost it, it's not going to sound that great. Mid left, let's check mid right, exactly the same, too much level. Mid, okay, so right mid range because mid left, mid right. Yeah, because of this dip. See, because of this, this dip, you have much better following to the target with the same crossover, which is great. And this looks very nice as well. Mid right EQ. Yeah, that's perfect. Just this for some reason, this little dip. Uh, I don't know why it's there, but you should uh, think about getting rid of it because why? Yeah, but like mid range left, mid range right, after EQ, very nice. And aha, uh -huh, so, okay, look, now this, like you have on one mid range, you have a dip on the other one, you have a peak. So in theory, and this is like, what well, five, like eight dB difference. So in theory, if you're playing a like instrument, a note or something of like 690 Hertz, it's going to pull to one side because of the difference in level. Because if it's like like this, 2, 3 dB, it's not that much. But when you have like 8, 9 dB, because yeah, it's like 8, probably 9 dB difference, it's, it's gonna, it, it can pull Ex exactly the same here as well. You have a massive difference between those two. So just, uh, yeah, I would uh, maybe bring, not boost this, but maybe bring this peak a little bit down. But yeah, mid ranges look very nice and follow the targets as well. Let's have a look what he did with the mid base. So that's the mid base target. Let's choose base left for range and base left. Okay, so he crossed at 60 and 300. So yeah, 60, it needs a crossover at 60. A higher would be better, but mm, I guess it's fine. And we have too much energy here. And you, see, you can see straight away, it doesn't follow the target curve at all, just because it needs that crossover. And I would imagine the right is exactly the same. Yeah, so it does follow below 60, it does follow, and it doesn't follow the target. So in your case, um, in some sim systems, that's unavoidable because if you have a mid base with high QTS, it's going to follow by like fall by itself. You apply the crossover and it's going to fall even more. So <laughs> you need a front subwoofer mate, either front subwoofer or either eight, but yeah, or a like subwoofer that could play very, very high. But yeah, so we have left. Let's check the EQ work. Where is it? Base left EQ. Yeah, so just bring this peak down and you cannot really do much with the top bottom end. It just it is what it is. It just doesn't follow the target. And with the right from, from this, we have this. Yeah. You could do very similar just with levels, I would imagine, because you just need to bring it down and this slightly down. Or again, maybe with a shallower crossover. So like 
base right. Where is the base right? Yes, yeah, so you, you crossed it at 300. What, I, what you could have done, you could cross it at 500. Let me show you very quickly. 34 is this one, yeah? So you crossed it at, I would imagine, link was probably 24, uh, 300. So you cross it like this, and you can see you're losing a lot of energy here like uh, where you crossed it to the mid range. So instead of doing this, because you lost like at, let's say 300 Hertz, you lost like what ADB and here a lot as well. You could do a Butterworth, maybe four at 500 or maybe four. And you can see, it, it does go according to the your chosen target curve, but it doesn't take a lot of energy from this area, which is your crossover region. And like this dip, like see at 470, it does follow like all the way up to 470, and only then it separates from the frequency response. So just play with different, don't be scared to play with different uh, crossovers, because like this energy, you could bring it back. So yeah, uh -huh. this, and we have left and right base. Yeah, so they're falling up to 320 something, because if you cross them at 300, you ideally would want it to follow all the way up to 600, but it's not gonna happen because of those cancellations. And at the bottom, and again, below 60, not much, but you cannot do much about it. Let's have a look at the subwoofer. This is the target. Woo, that's a lot of level. Okay, and this, so what I noticed with these, all the measurements that you did, you have what I think, it, this is just, I think it's noise. I had this issue a few times with a UMIC when I was measuring. And what I did when I had this, I just uh, unplugged the microphone and plugged it back in and all this noise went away. So I'm just going to apply some smoothing, just like that, to see the measurements better. Yeah, and you can see um, he was playing with different levels and different crossovers, but yeah, uh, that's just noise. So just unplug the microphone, plug it back in, and it should be fine. And what do we end up with? Yeah, subwoofer, too much level. And we have extension to 40. Where's the EQ? Again, some noise, sub EQ, there we go. Let's apply this, this one. Yeah, so he brought the peak, this little peak down. And we have now extension down to, yeah, 2930, that's perfect. So then it's like, it's, it is a ported box tuned quite high, like 37, 38 or something like that. So you cannot ask it to play too low. And it is kind of SPL-ish sub. So yeah, that's perfectly fine. Just uh, get rid of this because for some reason it's still there, even after, after crossover, after EQ. Let's have a look how everything sums. Sub and left base. Yes, yeah, is the first time I'm looking at these measurements. So, base summed. Okay, so this is interesting. If we have a look at base left EQ, base right EQ, and we see that base summed has a massive cancellation here. So that tells me that it's a time alignment issue. They're not in phase. So have a look at your time alignment. Yeah, because if you have a can, because like if you would have uh, a perfect sum, you would have plus six dB on all the frequencies and maybe a little dip here because of this dip, but everything should be like more or less equal. And if you have this, it is a time alignment issue because you have like, yeah, you have six dB here up till here, six dB here all the way, 
and here is a null. So it is a time alignment issue. Check that. What else we have? Tweet are summed. Obviously, they're going to sum nice. Midrange. Okay, let's have a look at midrange. Uh, right EQ and midrange left EQ. Yeah, they sum nice as well. So just a level difference. Probably he brought the level up back. But like with midrange, what I noticed as well, like this area between like one and two and a half K, whatever, it's always very, very chaotic. This, 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 and this. So this is your sum for all. So again, you played with the levels. Yeah, that's fine. Let's remove these. So this is time alignment issue. And this looks the... Aha, uh -huh. is it out of phase or is it just base right EQ? This is going to be out of phase as well. Timing issue. It's not extension. I would imagine this is a timing issue as well. So mid base, double check your mid base, left and right, and then uh, timing phase alignment between your subwoofer and mid base as well, because this shouldn't be there. It should be like going all the way there. Where's your target, the ball overall, overall? Yeah. And I think, yeah, this, uh -huh, and this is for the Hertz subwoofer. Oh, so what I want to show you about this, the Hertz subwoofer. So this is the full range, and this is with 60 crossover. And where's the target for the subwoofer? Sub. There we go. And you can see... Um, this you can EQ like down to 30 is fine. And then you're missing level here after crossing it at 60 Hertz. So again, play with the crossovers and don't cross it at 60 Hertz. Uh, 31, let me show you what I mean. So this is your full range, yeah? If you cross it at link with Riley for 60, yeah, you have it all the way like this. And you need this energy at like here, 70, 80 hertz. You need this energy. So what you do again, try Butterworth 4 at, let's say, 80. And you see it brings back all this energy. And let's uh, let's compare this. Filter task. Generate from predicted. There you go. So you have... This is full range, yeah? And this is your crossed at 60. And this is Butterworth crossed at 80. And you can see it follows the target curve much better. So it might be not 80, maybe it would we need like 70, but it would follow the target curve much better than your crossed at 60. Play with different types of crossovers. Try bezel, try Butterworth, try different slopes. Don't get hung up on 24 link with Riley, yeah? And in general, all your EQ work is fine. All, all looks good. The only thing is the timing. So like tweeters are fine, mid-range is fine. Your mid-base has some timing issues and phase is not aligned between the subwoofer and the mid-base. But yeah, in general, it looks not bad. Not sure how it sounds, but it looks not bad. Maybe a bit to too much top end. Maybe just reduce the tweet as my like 3 dB. It's just, it, again, it's personal preference. And if you want more low end extension, because yeah, it's ported. Try the same subwoofer that you have. Exactly the same subwoofer, same box. Shut the port with a pillow or something, and then it's going to be a big sealed box because that subwoofer with a Q of like 0.5, it will work in sealed. It, it, it does have a quite high FS, but you will be able to extend the bottom end a bit further because the sub is not going to bottom out like imported. So you can try that and play with the timing. Yeah, cool. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.